On behalf of the Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, we extend you a warm welcome for this session aimed at addressing your big related queries. Today, we are holding this session with the close cooperation of our two big associate partners, the Healthcare Technology Innovation Center or HTIC, which is a joint initiative by the Indian Institute of Technology Madras and the Department of Biotechnology. Our next uh, associate partner is the Science and Technology Entrepreneurial Park uh, from the PSG College of Technology, otherwise known as PhD, PSG STEM. Both of our associate partners can help you with mentoring and any other guidance you might need with big or other aspects of your journey as an incubator, as an in innovator, sorry. We're also lucky to have two of our ecosystem partners with us today. The Atal Incubation Center from the uh, Center for Molecular and Cellular Biology and the Medical Innovation, Creativity and Entrepreneurship Lab or MICE Labs who offer some of the country's best infrastructure and other incubation related support to the startup ecosystem. We request you to please reach out to our collaborators if you need their help in your entrepreneurial journey, especially when executing your big project. So uh, as most of you all are aware, the big, uh, the 19th cycle of the big, big grant is the call is open. It opened on August 1st and it will close on 15th September at uh, 5.30 PM. So keeping that in mind for today's session, we would want to give you a brief introduction to the scheme before bringing your question to our questions to our panelists today. Um, uh, I would like to announce at the outset that our CEO, Ms. Poini Bhatt, would have really liked to join this session and welcome uh, our panelists today herself, but because of some reasons, she could not join us today. Today, we are lucky to have Dr. Avinash Sejali with us. He is a physician turned invest investment banker with six years experience in healthcare delivery, 12 years experience in life sciences, and about 70 years of experience in investment banking in the life sciences sector. He has a rich experience in mentoring and seed funding in life sciences ventures. He has executed domestic and cross-border transactions as well on acquisitions, divestment, uh, brand acquisition and capital raise, both PE and uh, venture fi financing. He has also mentored a startup in the on oncogenomics business. Dr. Sejale has also served on the evaluator panels for many cycles of the big grant. And because of his extensive experience in the healthcare domain, both as a domain expert and investor, he can bring you some very valuable insights into preparing for this grant and mapping out your strategy as an innovator in this domain. The next panelist today is Dr. Ramji, who has also served on the big evaluation panel for many years. Dr. Ramji has a PhD from Osmania University and extensive research experience, and is also holding an MBA from uh, Pondicherry University. He's currently serving as the Chief Operating uh, Officer at the Atal Incubation Center of CCMB, Hyderabad, since uh, 2018. He has also held managerial positions at the IKP Knowledge Park and served as a research scientist with ICGEB, New Delhi. He has also been a part of several advisory boards of incubators and institute innovation councils of various government and private organizations. And with this kind of a background, he will bring his expertise to help resolve some of your queries today. We also have with us a successful big grantee from the 15th cycle, Shubhankar Takle. Shubhankar is the CTO of MyoWorks, a startup invo involved in engineering solutions to solve the problem of scaffolds in the cultivated meat industry. His intersecting experiences in mechanical and biomedical engineering uniquely enable him to create scalable solutions for the cell-based meat world. Shubhankar will share with us today some of his experiences navigating the different evaluation stages of the big grant. And I am Bratiti. I am part of the business development team here at Sign, and I also manage the big grant. I have a PhD in life sciences. And uh, so today on behalf of the Sign big team, I will be moderating this session. Today's session will include a brief introduction of the participating incubators, followed by a brief overview of the big grant then we will open up the session to questions addressed to our panelists today. So we intend to keep it as interactive as possible. When applying for the big scheme, there are two entities that you need to have identified right at the beginning. One is your incubator, where you will execute the work during the project. And then is the big partner, where, uh, who will facilitate the release of funds and monitor your progress throughout the tenure of the grant. There is a conglomerate of eight big partners spread across the country, 
and they are instrumental in handholding young startups prior, during, and after the completion of the big grant. When applying, you will need to select your big partner, so please make your selection early on. However, while you need no document of support from your big partner, you will need either a letter of intent or an incubation letter in case you're already incubated somewhere from your incubator, uh, from your selected incubator. Let me introduce you now to the incubators that are a part of the session. Please visit their websites and reach out to them for any help required in the near future. HDIC, as I mentioned earlier, is a renowned incubator in the South needing very little introduction. Since its establishment in 2012, it has created a huge impact in the healthcare domain and is currently incubating 38 plus startups founded by experienced doctors, researchers, engineers, serial entrepreneurs, students, and IITM faculty. There are four technologies in the market and five technology platforms and products in the pipeline. They have raised more than 45 crores of funding, both from industry and government sources. You can access their network of mentors, various domain experts, and the IATM ecosystem in general by reaching out to them for incubation and other support. They have a very supportive big team who can also help you prepare for your big applications. Next, we have uh, PSG um, STEP, the BioNest Bio Incubator, which is located at Coimbatore. Again, a well-established incubator with a rich history of supporting startups for over two decades. They are focused on areas of information technology, electronics, mechanical engineering, nanotech, and biotech. They also boast of 100,000 square feet of infrastructural space um, with fabrication labs and other facilities made available to their incubators. They have supported more than 250 startups and created a significant impact in job creation and fostering a healthy in incubation network composed of incubation centers, hospitals, and centers pro promoting biomedical innovation. They are also supported by many government granting schemes to support different stages of an innovation's innovator's journey. PhD Steps Mentor Pool would help you identify the right business model for business development and be of great support for your big project. Coming to our ecosystem partners today, you are all familiar with the Atal Incubation Center associated with the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology or CCMB Hyderabad. It supports startups and scientists with early stage technologies in life sciences through funding opportunities, latest biological equipment, mentorships and financial advice. Ranked number four on the list of best bio incubators in India, AIC CCMB is a place where in, in innovators and startups in healthcare, pharmaceuticals, and biotechnology can find business support services and a handholding network necessary to take their idea to the next level. They also have the support of various granting sch schemes from DBT, DST, and METI. Since its establishment in 2018 at a Grand Government Medical College and Sir JJ Group of Hospitals, Mumbai, the Medical Innovation, Creativity and Entrepreneurship Lab, or MICE Labs as they're known, aims to provide a common platform for engineers and doctors to formulate innovative ideas, strategies, process, or a device. Doctors, nurses, medical students, and engineers need to come together to generate innovations which are creative. This lab helps come up with such solutions that are easily accessible to the common man and better than existing op options. The main aim of this organization is to ignite the spirit of entrepreneurship and impact all aspects of healthcare. Please uh, reach out to them at the email address provided and visit the websites of all of these incubators. This brings us uh, to Sign, uh, who I'm representing today. Sign is the technology business incubator associated with I IIT Bombay. Since its inception in 2004, Sign has strived to enable entrepreneurs with deep tech solutions that will contribute to IP creation with a social, economic, and strategic impact. Although initially set up to help our faculty and students in their entrepreneurial journeys, it is now open to all, and we have now supported more than 300 startups in a sector agnostic manner and have facilitated government support to a host of our incubators. Sign as an incubator can provide you access to a rich network of mentors, experts, IITB faculty and alumni within the IITB network. Besides Sign's own infrastructural support, 
We also make other state-of-the-art R&D facilities within the campus accessible to our incubators. Besides that, we can make connects to our vast network of investors, legal, IP, and industrial connects. Through our cross-border collaborators, we can also help bring exposure to international markets. Bratati, are you there? Hello, am I audible now? Now you are audible. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Uh, from start to scale, an entrepreneur's journey can be supported by sign through three stages. Pre-incubation, which involves initial handholding, mentoring, exposure to seed funds. Incubation, which extends for a period of three years to help provide lab and manufacturing facilities for prototype development. And finally, finally accelerating the product's entry to the market. We hold frequent training and bootcamp sessions to bring on young entrepreneurs up to speed with the current market scenario and set them up with the tools necessary for success. We also provide access to a well-equipped biolab, electronics, metalworking, and prototyping facilities. So why should you select Sign as your big partner? We provide mentoring and handholding throughout the application and evaluation process and ease your journey as a successful big grantee, even at the latter stages. You will get access to our network as a pre-incubator under the big scheme. You can also navigate your big journey better with peer-to-peer -peer learning from other grantees in our system. Our big grantees are also taken through special boot camps with our in-house mentors to better acquaint them with the knowledge and tools required for success in a young startup's journey. Let's look at the hierarchical arrangement of government schemes that were initiated by BIRAC to support you progressively through your journey as an innovator. These are segregated based on what stage your innovation currently is. So from ideation to POC, you have a set of funds and BIG is one of the major grant and aid schemes at the earliest stages. This could, this could be followed by successive funds that support prototype development and manufacture such as SIBRI and BIP. The quantum of funds at every stage is commensurate with the requirements of, for that stage of product development. For more information regarding these schemes, please visit the BIRAC website, and uh, that will take you through each grant at every stage of your journey. To look for the BIRAC grant that is suited to you, you should first try to properly gauge the technology readiness level or TRL of your innovation. For instance, for big, it, since it is an early stage grant, the TRL should not be higher than three. If your TRL is higher, look for the next suitable grant for you. An inability to gauge the TRL might lead to disqualification, and you should definitely reach out to your big partner or your incubator to sort this out. The Biotechnology Ignition Grant is a flagship scheme by the Department of Biotechnology. It aims to help young entrepreneurs establish a proof of concept for their innovation and take it to market. The key aim here is commercialization. It is meant to support young or established academicians and young startups with 50 lakhs for the execution of their proof of concept in 18 months. It is critical to mention here that a minimum qualification of a completed undergraduate degree is required. The 18th call of this grant is currently under process. And as I mentioned earlier, the 19th call has already opened and will close on September 15th. By any metric of evaluation, the big grant has been a successful initiative. It has supported more than 125 startups and led to the launch of more than 50 products in the market. If you're considering applying for this grant, please check out the list of broad categories supported by this grant, and you can get more information on this uh, on the BIRAC big website too. There is MedTech, for instance, covering medical devices, diagnostics, drugs, and drug delivery systems, and regenerative medicine, to name a few. We also have agriculture and allied themes covering secondary agriculture, animal husbandry, aquaponics, and so on. We also have industrial biotech and environmental sciences covering um, topics like waste management, sanitation, and clean energy solutions. If, uh, uh, on the other hand, you're developing a software solution that has a biotechnological application, you can also apply. Your big partner can help you find the correct scheme fit for you if you're unsure about it. 
you can apply either as an individual or as a company. Either way, you have to provide a passport as a, a proof of nationality, and it is required of all PIs and in case of uh, companies, the shareholders in the company uh, under question. Now, I will quickly go over some of the critical things to keep in mind for either category, but for the sake of time, I will touch upon only a few of these. For instance, if you're applying as an individual, uh, the minimum qual minimal qualification, as I mentioned earlier, is a completed uh, undergraduate degree. Uh, similarly, you, if you have, are a stakeholder in any other biotech company, you cannot uh, apply as an individual. You should apply uh, on behalf of the company. You should, ideally, it's encouraged to have more than uh, uh, multiple team members with, uh, um, with complementary skill sets. If you've identified an incubator, you should uh, obtain a letter of intent from them and upload this along with your proposal. Now, if you are employed, for instance, if you are a part of academia, either as faculty or a student, you need to require to get a no objection certificate from your institution and you have to upload this along with your proposal. This no objection uh, certificate allows you to uh, concentrate on your project for the 18 months. Uh, in case of academia, uh, in case of faculty, you can always hire uh, people to execute the project which you can supervise since you have other uh, responsibilities to the institution that is employing you. On the other hand, if you're privately employed, you have to provide a declaration that says that if you're a successful big grantee, you are willing to uh, uh, terminate your current uh, form of employment and take up this project and the launch of your startup as a full-time project. In case of a company, the age of the company is very important. So from the uh, date that the call opened, in this case, it's August 1st, you should calculate your company's age and it should not be more than five years. Uh, the PI who's apl applying on behalf of the company should be holding some shares uh, in the company uh, that they're representing. If, uh, um, one of, if the PI or other founding members of one company are stakeholders uh, in, uh, or shareholders in other ineligible biotech companies, they are automatically um, disqualified from applying. Uh, also, as a company, you have to upload uh, company financials and other documents such as memorandum of association, articles of association, the shareholding pattern, and so on. This is, uh, as most of you know, this is an extremely competitive grant. So needless to say, the evaluation process is quite exhaustive. The first stage is the screening of your written proposal by the preliminary screening committee. Here, the fundamental eligibility of the applicant, supporting documents, scheme fit for the submission, and so on are checked, and issues such as, insufficient, uh, such as sufficiency of information to support subsequent evaluation are gauged with the help of experts, and non-plagiarism declarations are also obtained from the applicants. Following this, the proposals are segmented thematically and sent to five or more reviewers who are technical and business experts in the field for an online review process. Once the reviewers have scored the proposal on the basis of criteria set by BIRAC, and we will discuss these in a following slide, the proposals are then qualified to move on to the next stage of evaluation, uh, which is presentation before a technical expert panel. This is the only chance that the applicant gets to present their idea before a panel of domain experts and defend their proposals. Due to the ongoing, ongoing pandemic, these presentations are now in the virtual mode and mostly a short recorded presentation of eight minutes is followed by 20 minutes of Q&A with the panel. The applications are scored again and then recommended to move on to the next stage, which is the final decision made by the Expert Selection Committee or ESC. This panel has chairpersons and co-chairpersons from each theme who then get together and set the cutoff score uh, with BIRAC's approval for their theme based on the availability of funds that year and other considerations. Once the final decision is made, it is conveyed to the successful grantee by the big partner, who then goes on to complete the due diligence process and begins the dispersal of funds. Funds are normally released in three tranches and are linked to the ability of the grantee to successfully complete their milestones. It should be noted here that the whole process in the current period uh, takes about six to eight months, but post uh, this pandemic constraints, uh, the time taken to from application to dispersal of funds will be significantly reduced. The big partner will be helping you before you apply at the presentation stage by mentoring and helping you prepare effective presentation and hold you till the end, um, handhold you till the end of your grant period. 
many applicants have questions regarding who the evaluators are that are evaluating their applications at every stage. BIRAC approved evaluator panels normally include a mix of specialists in a particular domain, uh, and there are investors, business leads, and IT experts. The panel is intentionally kept varied, especially to evaluate an innovation from every angle to ensure the startup success post pick. Sorry, I would also like to uh, uh, mention here that uh, once the scoring is done, the geometric mean is taken of uh, the scores given by each reviewer. And then uh, according to the cutoff, uh, the thematic cutoff uh, decisions are made and those that make the cutoff move on to the next stage. And even if you are unsuccessful at the online review stage or at any other stage of evaluation, you always get the feedback of the reviewers. From the time you submit your written proposal to when you make your technical presentation before experts, at every stage your proposed work is being evaluated based on the final uh, for following criteria. The primary uh, and about 20% of uh, the weightage is given to this is the unmet need that you're addressing. How critical is We lost some issues, maybe. Yeah. You submit your uh, written proposal. Marthi, uh, I'm sorry, Pratati, we just lost you for a few seconds. Uh, yes, so I'm uh, repeating what I was going to say again. So from the time you submit your written proposal to when you make your technical presentation before experts, at every stage, your proposed work is being evaluated based on the following criteria. For instance, 20% of uh, uh, the primary criteria is the unmet need that you're uh, addressing and about 20% weightage is given to this. Is it a critical need? Have you spoken to and mapped the appropriate end users and received feedback from them? Do you have some stata data or statistics that show how dire the situation that you're addressing is? Which then brings us to your proposed solution, the novelty, the va its value proposition and differentiation. How novel is your solution? What is your competitive landscape like? Are there established players in the market? If yes, how is your solution different? The differentiator should be very strongly highlighted because mar markets for certain products are often saturated with many similar solutions. And Byrak, with its focus on intellectual property generation would want to know whether your technology is novel enough for that purpose and eventually the success of your startup. Also, is it going to add value by say being an import substitute or is it going to disrupt the current market, lower cost significantly? Some of these, these value additions should also be highlighted. The technical details of your projects should also be well laid out. If you have an existing IP, please mention that. Provide sufficient supporting data to back any claims that you're making about your solution. Also, the team strength and business perspective is very important. Highlight your team, their expertise. Ideally, you should have a multi-person team with complementary skill sets. Add to this a rich network of advisors, mentors appropriate to the domain, and you will then have an impressive combination. Get a business advisor to map, map out your target market, your go-to-market strategy and commercialization plan, all of which you will have to include in your written part. How to write a winning grant? Well, I will share some of my obs observations from successful grantees in the past. First of all, the secret, secret to a well-written grant is the groundwork that you put in. The quality of your writing will greatly influence the impression that a reviewer has when they first read your proposal. So start with a strong problem statement that encompasses the unmet need, your solution, and why it is better than any existing solution in the market. Have clarity on who your customers are and what uh, solutions they're really looking for. If your end user is a doctor, for example, talk to as many as you can and get clarity on the ground realities of the problem that you are designing the solution for. Provide sufficient technical details with illustrations, videos, flowcharts, and as much information as you're willing to share uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the reviewers. Remember that wishy-washy technical sections end up antagonizing the reviewer who will miss the importance of what you're proposing. Provide all supporting documents like the proposal summary, the concept note, which at a glimpse gives the reviewer the highlight of your solution and the novelty note also um, summarizes who your major competitors are in the market and what parameters you're beating them at. Also provide a crisp slide deck 
following the template provided by Bayra. Complete all sections have realistic work plans with alternate strategies should plan A fail. And timelines, timelines that give faith uh, to the uh, reviewer that you'll be able to execute the project on time. Provide preliminary data to support your claims. Why should anybody believe the claims that you're making about your product? So back it up with preliminary data, publications, and whatever is available to you. Most often we see that reviewers depend on this because they want to make sure that the project can be completed within the short time given. Highlight the strength of you, your team members and mentors to inspire confidence in both the technical and business expertise that will help launch your entrepreneurial journey through this grant. Will you be able to generate IP at the end of your 18 months? Does your product depend on other patented technologies and do you have the freedom to operate in that domain are the factors that you should be addressing. Now, when making your technical presentation before the panel, please remember to provide your answers in a succinct and direct manner. You have little time to clarify all queries regarding your innovation. Please support your claims with some preliminary data, as I mentioned earlier, or a small scale proof of principle. This will bolster your proposed proof of concept and elicit confidence about the executability of your project within the short time given. Provide pictures, videos, and any other visual representations of your proposed prototype, for example. Don't be caught off guard about your competition in the market. State your novelty and differentiators in this context. Get mentors and other team members to be present to help you field questions beyond your expertise. Highlight your patterns. Have a clear idea of the IP future for your innovation. Show any interest or feedback that you might have received from potential end users that you're designing the solution for. The budgeting of, the, of this grant is also very important because reviewers would like to see that you have a proper understanding of what you need for the proper execution of your proposal. First, have a chat with your incubator to figure out the incubation charges. This is where you will carry out the majority of your work. For equipment, budget only those uh, that are not available with your incubator. Often it might be cheaper to outsource the work than buy your own equipment. Please remember that if you have an existing source of income, you cannot draw a salary out of this grant. And if you, even if you do under the manpower head, it cannot be more than 50K a month. Same goes for any team member or intern you wish to employ through this grant for this grant period. The contingency and consumables heads will be the most flexible and will depend upon your work. So please apportion the upper, upper limit of funds allowed in these categories to allow you to move money to cover unforeseen expenditures on at a later date. Remember that any changes to the budget going forward will need proper justification and approval from Bayra or your big partner. You might need to outsource fabrication or lab testing or other forms of an analysis. So please apportion the requ required amounts under heads uh, such as other heads, outsourcing and so on. Similarly, please keep some money apportioned to IP filing charges. Uh, they should also be accounted in your budget. So uh, BIG has recently uh, included the royalty clause as part of its agreement. This is only applicable uh, once you start revenue uh, generating with your startup. You'll have to pay 5% uh, of the royalty on the uh, sales of your product till the royalty amount is the same as the grant in assistance that was provided to you. And also you have to make suitable payments for uh, technology transfer and licensing. So things to remember about your application, please start your application process early. This is a very involved um, application. So the, with various sections, and so give it a good thought, edit and re-edit to the best of your ability. And this, can, this is only possible if you don't leave things at the last minute. Also take uh, inputs from your mentors, your big partner, anybody who's willing to help, um, look over the draft of your applications. Get the necessary letters on time and upload them in the correct places. Uh, provide preliminary data, validation, supporting documents, wherever it is allowed, and uh, highlight your team, like I mentioned earlier. Talk to your advisors early so that you can share their uh, CVs as part of your application. Try to submit at least a week in advance. Uh, if you wait till the last minute, the portal often gets uh, uh, sees a lot of traffic, and your you might be uh, your application submission might be jeopardized because of that. Also, please remember that the deadline on September 15th is 5.30 p.m. and not midnight. With that, uh, I'm coming to an end of my overview of um, the big process. For any further questions, please reach out to us at sign underscore big at sign, sign And for similar such uh, sessions that have happened already that you've not managed to attend, 
please go to the SIGN YouTube channel and visit the SIGN website for more information on BIRAC and other grants. Okay, so uh, we're just uh, trying to remove uh, my share screen for a second, but uh, we can. Okay, okay so uh, let's begin with the Q&A session for today. So uh, for to the uh, participants to please post your questions uh, in the Q and A chat box and uh, try not to put it in the chat box, instead put it in the Q and A box so that we can pick questions from there and get them answered. Uh, so I will start off the session with a couple of questions to our panelists today. First, uh, Dr. Avinash, I'll start with you. Um, you have just come off the big 18 TEP, right? You've had some long days and uh, you've uh, seen a lot of these entrepreneurs present their ideas to you. So what are the few things for the benefit of our audience today, the do's and the don'ts that you would like to share with us? Uh, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Brapati, uh, for inviting me. And nice to see you, all the panels here. And happy to be answering questions here. <laughs> so for the last TV that we just finished uh, uh, about yesterday, uh, uh, the, uh, shall I start by saying that there, there are some common uh, mistakes uh, that the presenters uh, uh, do, and uh, that's when you uh, when when you're not clear with your uh, your uh, uh, your technology or your uh, proposal, you tend to circle around. You tend to you know, uh, and that's a great no-no. And the panelists have to finish proposals to remember 15 20 proposals in a day and they are, they are very intense uh, sessions uh, it's not as if uh, so a, every single word that is spoken has to be further uh, evaluated every single uh, statement and everything that you see about technology uh, uh, we churn it uh, through our minds and then there are uh, after your sessions are over again when uh, you log out uh, uh, the panelists uh, start scratching their head. Is uh, ye bola tha ya wo bola tha? But this is what uh, my interpretation was and this is what your interpretation was. And then we tend to sort of, you know, reinterpret your statements. So clarity of thoughts, clarity of presentation and brevity. These are the three uh, absolutely important sessions that we see. And uh, if, you, if you guys uh, can manage that, it helps the, uh, how do you say, when the panelists get together to, uh, finally give marks to you it really helps in understanding whether we all are on the same page or not i thought does that answer your question Dathati? yes yes sir so um i hope all our panelists paid attention that brevity and getting directly to the point you can always uh, further expand on what you want to say but if there is a directed question at you answer that before you go uh, expanding and i agree with you that often the clarity of thought is what helps brevity. So if you're unclear about what you're about to say or even what the answer is, you will beat around the bush a little bit before coming to the point. So uh, one of the uh, suggestions that we can give from our end is prepare thoroughly. Don't go unprepared. Uh, field questions, uh, if you can, from mentors, from others, just hold these mock sessions and try to answer questions to the point. Um, Shubhankar, I'll uh, go to you next because uh, you have been a successful big grantee and you faced uh, the technical expert panel. You've made technical presentations. Can you share some of your thoughts regarding this? Um, yeah, I think in terms of the written round, it's important to recognize that um, the first round of writing, whatever you do, first, like what you said was absolutely true, you should start early. But uh, the point of starting early is that you should keep changing what you're going to submit. Like, don't just, you know, whatever you write, the first draft is not, it's not 
you know an acting play or anything you don't have to do everything first take write something get it reviewed by someone make changes don't be afraid to make changes um keep making changes till your deadline well hopefully well before your deadline but uh, only then will you get a very refined and clear idea about your own idea also because of the way the proposal is structured it makes you question and think about each thing in a very formatted manner um so take take that opportunity to understand your idea a little better also uh take that opportunity to research it get some feedback and uh, don't be afraid to change it what you've written yesterday is has like has no permanence you know you can change it that's okay that's something i i faced at least early on where you know you kind of get committed to writing what you like submitting what you've written that doesn't matter it's about writing something that can win completely agree with you and any pointers about the presentation part of it um how yeah, did you prepare to, for I instance write preempt questions hmm. um so uh, they give you a good review like text in terms of you know what the uh, reviewers were thinking of, about the written document so it can be that they will give you very clear pointers well you we think you're lacking in the experience space or we think you're lacking in the technology validation space or the business space take those to heart and try to formulate question answers um and answer as best as you can right you you've been put a challenge just find the best possible answer to those questions um as truthfully as possible so and also if you don't have experience in whatever space try to compensate it with a mentor mm. try to compensate it with uh, uh you know you can't you can't over just one week of uh, get all the experience you need for business get a business mentor if that's the main thing your reviewer has talked about and uh, that's going to help you uh thank you for that uh, with that i come to uh, dr ram ji following what shubhankar just said is uh, well, you have reviewed hundreds of uh, written proposals at this point so we often see this that uh, a proposal gets to the review phase and is the, and the the team is just torn apart when they're actually making their presentation and we often wonder like why is there such a discord so uh, is it that the reviewer of the online written proposal is viewing certain things that is not or is something is being added on when the technical presentation is made like are some of those holes exposed there which is not there in the written part of the proposal which is why many uh, applicants get through yeah i think uh, i can uh, tell reverse way in the sense you know <clears throat> uh even the people are uh, presenting best way in tep but the proposals are not effective you can think that way as well so asking your question uh yes uh, i mean just few tips uh, adding on to your question is that when you are writing a proposal you can't actually see the reviewer or the tep panel member so you have to reflect those wordings and expressions properly so that you can create a kind of excitement or a kind of eye to eye contact on your proposal itself first thing because you want to tell 100 things out there and uh, ultimately you are very enthusiastic and energetic that uh, a reviewer can observe or understand immediately because as and when they go through the proposal first thing who are you what you are working on summary then straight away go to the commercialization plan and go to your objectives are they clear and feasible budgetary and all it's okay sign team and other teams the partners can take care of why i'm telling all this is that we have to actually convey a crispy message out there so that the reviewer can actually see those five sections very particularly to score you because as prathiti mentioned there is a kind of cut off you know i have seen from the call of uh, big 4 or 5 okay and uh, so much of changes happen you know while selection uh, different levels of uh, screening etc so i think nowadays even the recent call uh, different change i mean uh, changes happen even the reviewers it's a new thing that you know whether you can actually click on to the button recommended and not recommended so some people some of the reviewers can actually uh give less scores less score in the sense maybe less than 60 for example 
but they would like to recommend and push it to the next level, TEP level. Some give very, uh, you know, kind of, you know, less score, I mean, more scores. I mean, about 75 or 80, considering the novelty of it or maybe very exciting to them. But they may say, you need to do a lot of legwork and you can come back next time. So they may click on to that, not recommend. So I think uh, now you can't uh, choose that recommended, not recommended. So why I'm telling, uh, you know, this thing is that each and every section has some points for you. I think if you can stress on those points very effectively, you can reach to that level of at least 70 plus. You know, if you can get it, you can go to TP. Okay, come to the question. So you are passing through that because each and every reviewer is different. You know, I am from academic background and also seen at least few hundreds of startups in my past four or five years or six years. But again, uh, my understanding may be different. A core technologist may be a different guy and a completely uh, business guy, you know, maybe an investor who is reviewing, maybe having a different. So the scores may be different and you are pushed to the next level. But at the TEP level, you actually thank uh, yourself and the reviewers, okay, for pushing it to the TEP because you got a great chance. I mean, kind of, you know, 50% will be, or maybe 70% uh, will be out of that uh, first training, the reviewer side. So you are very fortunate to actually defend yourself for the TEP. There, the problem what Bratati is uh, um, pointing out is that they have a template and you want to tell few things in the template, but you have to exercise a lot, not like your proposal. This is a kind of different game of engaging the uh, panel members because you are seeing the panel members. They will be asking questions and you have to be prepared and uh, no fumbling and faltering. In the sense, the BIG partners are giving mock presentations and uh, kind of taking a lot of time to address each and every section of the PPT and subsections of the PPT. One underlined and bold statement here, Bratati, for every participants, why this is not, they're, they're not able to express well, or why the gaps are there means, I think, uh, coachability in the sense, we are coaching at the best, but th they are not that receptive. I think please try to listen to the mentors and advisors which are uh, assigned by the big partners or other incubators where you are incubated or maybe you'll be reaching out to any other incubators. We actually train them, but this is the uh, important point in this slide. Please don't miss it. But even though it is a recorded version of presentation nowadays, but at the questions time, I think you'll be, uh, uh, you, you're not actually answering those questions in time. I think uh, a lot of rehearsals are to be done and a lot, lot of kind of, you know, exercise, you know, this is not a simple thing because uh, 10 panel members or eight panel members, for example, are prepared to ask 20 questions and you have to prepare for 50 questions. Uh, I think uh, that's what the gap I can. Quickly Thank get. you very much, Dr. Ramji. You've kind of uh, covered most of the uh, issues that we uh, have seen as uh, while mentoring our applicants and also I'm sure uh, for first and second time, uh, applicants, they are they face the same the same experiences. Thank you very much for sharing those insights. Uh, with that, I will come back again to Dr. Shazale. Um, I just wanted to ask this because uh, from my uh, brief experience with big data, seems to be a really double-edged sword. Like uh, sometimes uh, review uh, panelists, especially in the technical expert panel, are complaining that there is not enough data. Sometimes there is too much data where they feel that the uh, applicant has advanced too much in their uh, journey uh, of developing, developing their product or technology. And so how much data is sufficient data? And how does this apply to people who are, say, applying for the second or sometimes even the third time? Is more expected out of them? Dr. Sajale, if you could answer these questions. So uh, uh, the comment about data uh, uh, is not a generic comment, which means it's not applicable generically for all the proposals. Uh, so, uh, a, 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 any project which is, uh, uh, let's say, one of the projects in the critical care segment, for example, would definitely need 
a good backup data because uh, uh, you, we can't we cannot expect uh, uh, the product without you know preliminary data uh, being positive we we cannot handle we cannot uh, uh, guide them or we cannot take them in uh, in a in a critically ill segment so the segment and the sector and the, so the flavor changes for from proposal to proposal however uh, um, the least you can do is uh, you can you can have a, some kind of a, a proof of concept if you have a, if 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 you are able to generate data enough to back up your claim about the innovation uh, and that data has to be at least uh, some uh, how do you say at the basic level it should be directly applicable to the uh, innovation uh, projected or uh, proposed and if you are able to progress to an additional level data it helps but i can tell you that uh, uh, it's really subjective in nature uh, so uh, sometimes you get away uh, sometimes uh, you may not but uh, uh, every comment that is uh, that that is related to data maybe uh, the candidate is encouraged to uh, uh, you know dive deeper and understand as to uh, what level of uh, accuracy is my current data that i have proposed i have i am proposing or i am presenting and do i need an incremental change to the data or do i need to new have a new subset or new set of data altogether these are all generic 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 replies they don't apply and they differ from project to project so uh, guys don't uh, take it as a generic statement altogether uh, but especially i can tell you that especially in critical care uh, devices or a critical care application where we believe uh, uh, it's going to affect uh, significantly the life of patient so uh, that is where we don't want to be wrong and that's where uh, sometimes you ask for uh, for the candidate to come up with some more data but that data is so specific to that proposal i am unfortunately we are using this word data as a generic word but it's really some some points some some more additional information and that the candidate is expected to dig and you know check out with the big partner and figure out deep dive and figure out where am i today and what do i do need to do to come out again uh, for to for the, to present again i think if that answers the question yes thank you very much so i see there is already a question about uh, whether applying for the big call for a second or third time impacts the applicant in any way either positively or negatively now i would really draw like to draw your attention to this and i see that dr shazal is already typing an answer to it but uh, dr ramji if you could uh, help uh, maybe answer this question what about uh, if an applicant is coming back should they come back immediately in the next cycle should they wait and gather or like you know address the points that were raised about their proposal are they expected to come with more data how is the panel uh, like even whether it's a written proposal or the technical presentation how are these applicants being viewed yeah um, it's always a kind of weightage for the people who are coming second time third time or even fourth time uh because uh the committee the bireac also looks for consistency whether that person is really that innovator is really curious to engage uh, and uh, any improvement is there in the proposal if he is why he missed out in the previous time and they will be uh, checking that okay so uh when uh, the preliminary data or the comments for example you know they they are giving some comments you know these are the gaps in your proposal you can come back next time if they say you need to actually uh, revisit your proposal uh, what you have written so far in the previous call and whether i can actually address uh, you know artfully to meet the expectations of those reviewers or the future panel that you are going to face so i think uh, that is in your hand that okay immediately for the next call whether i can apply or not whether i can able to generate the data within those 
30, 40 days of time before the call closes. For example, you, many of the innovators are getting the feedback, maybe this week and previous week, mm -hmm. I'm just telling you. And uh, people may be forming the companies immediately, okay? Just to bring the seriousness, of course they are serious. And at the same time, doing some outsourcing was in some labs to generate some data. So if you are confident enough that within those 15, 20 days or uh, you know, 30 days of time, you can answer those questions and articulate your proposal in such a nice way to convince the reviewers again, yes, you can actually put the application immediately. But otherwise, some people, what they do, they will take some more time. I think, no, I think I got this experience. What reviewers are ex uh, asking exactly is correct. Maybe I can skip this call. Maybe I can come back after maybe 20th call I can apply. So they'll be full-fledged way ready. You know, especially this is happening most of the academic innovators because you know they are uh, in the kind they have different assignments and different projects and different uh, you know activities. So they take that kind of time and uh, they actually do the things more concrete way by taking the help of incubators and big partners like this, and they'll be coming back. So uh, one last sentence or word I can uh, give it to all the people is that be persistent and uh, try it again. Don't get discouraged. At least uh, 15 to 20 percent people get discouraged even first time if they're not getting. So that's what I'm telling you. So keep on applying. You will get it. Okay, Viral uh, Shah, you wanted to ask a question. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Viral? No, uh, I'm sorry. I, I guess it, it got clicked uh, by mistake. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Um, Shubhankar, I have uh, um, uh, following um, what Dr. Ramji just pointed out. I just wanted to ask you, uh, we got one of the questions from the registrants who wanted to know uh, how technical should your should the technical part of your uh, written proposal or your presentation be? Now, um, what I have noticed is for the technical expert panel, when you're presenting before them, you need to keep the right technical portions in there because there are domain experts who know exactly what you're talking about. Whereas in the written proposal, because it is uh, uh, like you're not there to answer their queries, you try to keep a good balance between giving a good overview and going uh, in depth into the technology part of it. How did you strike this balance? Can you uh, help our uh, participants today? Sure. Um, I think I spent quite a bit of time on the problem statement uh, as to kind of build up the novelty, the need, um, that kind of thing. Like get, uh, uh, as Dr. Ramji said, right, you have to get the panelists excited without actually looking at them eye to eye. So uh, introduce them to your space. You are, uh, you know, the panel is going to be diverse, so they, they may not be domain experts but they are humans. So they have an understanding of what the problem is. Uh, you know, if wound healing is a problem or if uh, agriculture is a problem or if poultry is a problem, they can understand that. So focus on that and then focus on how your technology is just the best thing since sliced bread and give some starting points about, uh, you know, okay, here's, here's the approach we're taking. Here's why we think it's a good approach. Here's our preliminary data. Sometimes you'll have preliminary data. Sometimes you'll have primary data. Sometimes you'll have secondary data. Just present it in, in a way that shows that this is a convincing direction, that this is the right, most logical direction to take. Um, don't, like, I, I, don't, I don't think I went into super deep detail on the technical side, other than just explaining the domain, um, explaining my direction, why I think this is the best direction, and how, how I was going to achieve it within the BIRAC funding and the timelines. Because that is also important. Like the goal has to be something that is reasonable within the 18 months. Um, you can't say I'm going to, you know, do something amazing in 18 months. Or if you reduce your scope too much, that's also not great, right? You want to strike that sweet spot. Okay, thanks a lot, Shubhankar. Um, going back to Dr. Shazale, Dr. Shazale, I have a question about uh, um, from attending these TEPs. Um, how does an applicant evaluate the, the market potential of the product? Because often uh, they appear a bit clueless when they are um, a kind of, uh, when they're facing the panel and the pan panel is asking about the market potential of their product, their competitors, their customers, whether they know uh, how well uh, their proposed innovation will do, have they done uh, pricing analysis, cost, uh, costing? 
so I see many uh, applicants being overwhelmed by those questions. So uh, what I was going to ask you is how does a, a first time applicant, for instance, evaluate the market potential of their product? And uh, again, a second question to you, which is unrelated, is you, uh, from your experience in the health tech domain, can you give some idea about what hurdles the, uh, the applicant can, al can already uh, anticipate? Because often they're asked, oh, how long do you think you can launch your product into the market? And they are clueless about that part because they don't know how long the clinical trials will take, how long it takes to uh, clear the uh, regulatory hurdles. So if you could answer this to somewhat unrelated questions and give us uh, help us out a little bit here. Okay, so Bratati, uh, I am a bit forgetful. What is your first question? Sorry. First question is how does uh, how does an applicant, especially a first time applicant, evaluate the market potential of their product? Okay, okay got it. So um, I, I must tell you all that uh, the TUP panelists are not gopper singers. We are all there to help out. Okay, uh, it's not as if we are there to pull your leg, or it's not as if uh, uh, want to find fault. In fact, the other way around. There are times, I must tell you all, that there are times where we have gone ahead and reinterpreted the entire proposal for the benefit of the applicants and for the benefits of everybody else also. So, in fact, we understand that first-time applicants or let's say they may not be from the domain or they may not be, they may not Otherwise, they would have already been in business a long time ago. So we understand that. It's not as if we are there to pull your leg or you know uh, put you down in any form. So uh, my strong recommendation is, as long as your core domain and your core invention, you are able to defend the core invention and you know that there is a market out there. I'm not now defining what size, etc. But as long as you know that there is a place for this innovation, we are okay if you're not able to answer the you know the market potential and size and you know if you're not able to answer the things. So we are okay with that. But what we are not okay with is if you yourself are not sure of what is it that you're proposing as as a as a proposal. That's when the other questions come into play. And that's where, you know, we then tend to fill up the time or figure out whether, you know, at least he doesn't know the other. So for every applicant, you have to be sure of what you're proposing. Everything else is a maaf kar de If you're not knowing, we are okay with it. We tend to find ways out of it. Uh, uh, Sorry again, what was the first question? I don't think I answered it. Oh, you've answered the first question really well. The second question was uh, in okay. your, with your expertise in the health, care, uh, health tech domain speci uh, specifically, uh, often uh, applicants seem unsure about uh, how long it will take them to even launch their product in the market, the regulator. Okay, so service. don't worry, no issue, don't worry. But uh, we don't expect everybody to know uh, uh, the commerce of the subject. Otherwise, they would have been you know, there will be business means. We understand that you come in from a science background. And that is where, uh, um, uh, where uh, you know, getting a good mentor and a good partner, uh, uh, a BIG partner is important for you. Uh, uh, don't underestimate the value of, uh, uh, you know, of advice uh, from wherever, whichever portals uh, is available. Don't underestimate that value. In fact, go out and seek uh, 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 you know, uh, counter questions from for your own proposal. You go actively seek those questions. Having said so, um, uh, there are some rough estimates um, of market sizing which are possible. Uh, what I suggest is uh, uh, you pick up one major indication of your device or innovation. Anything that comes to your mind, you, which you believe is the primary indication. You may have, you know, you may come up and say, I, this, my device works in one, two, three, four, five, six, then you are in, you will have to then defend all the six. But the one primary that you believe you might, you might want to focus your strength on and keep the committee engaged on that one important one. 
and then for that one important uh, application you might then go out and seek data uh, and uh, these days uh, enough data is available enough uh, uh, market sizing uh, models are available on the net at least just figure out let's say for example if somebody is talking about a product that uh, uh, talks of uh, uh, improving memory in let's say in alzheimers or helping them in alzheimers now you at least the least you can do is figure out and go out and figure out are there really so many patients of alzheimer's number one and then what where do you want to define uh, some i don't know i sometimes i tend to go overboard with time you'll have to stop me whenever i you believe that i am overshooting my time because no i'm go. letting you speak because uh, we we want to hear you speak so uh, so, so so coming back on that one specific example of let's say alzheimer's uh, if i were in your place i'll just at least figure out do some uh, uh, who statistic some of the statistics are i can tell you statistics sites are extremely helpful let's say nih for example or you will be surprised by the amount of data available on the fda website the us fda websites for example for example you pick up one of those european union websites and you will be amazed with the amount of uh, healthcare statistics that is available which is close which is not too far away from reality of course uh, indian statistics data are not so handy and therefore we also and the panelists also understand that this data in india is sketchy so we are okay with that so as long as you are able to figure out oh my patient size are almost like 100000 patient in the world but of those 100000 i may be able to address so and so on that is how you tend to drill down but believe me ye hum log ko sitting in the nice room it's very easy for us to comment but for the for the for the beginner and for the guy on the other side it's overwhelming i we completely understand i must tell you that the tp members are extremely helpful i mean you'll be amazed by the you know by the patience that they show all along and you know they they are completely dedicated to the growth of innovation in the country I don't think them that they in fact they go all out of the way sometimes they can be on the on the we can be on the on the pc all day long non stop non you know so understand that these are all helpful guys and if they have commented they are all for the good uh, uh, some of the detailed comments if you can look at uh, if if you can share with the big partners can share with the uh, with the uh, with the applicants then they'll understand that oh uske bare mein aisa bola tha kitna acha bola you know something like that how they help so um, don't get overwhelmed we understand that you will you are not masters of that information but some basic to hona chahiye but uh, uh, what is not good is if you are not sure of what you are speaking on your clarity on the innovation part so all the tp guys actually look at is boss is the science right if the science is right then we are all there to help because we want those innovations to be i'm sorry i spoke a lot uh, i stopped no, you no uh, i i just hope that uh, our participants today take that uh, one take home message that you pointed out that uh, the panelists are on their side so if they are confident of their science they will get the and their idea is good the technology is good they will rathati the sometimes you will you will be surprised we fight amongst ourselves to mm-hmm. prove that the science is right no, sometimes we that, fight yeah, 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 we, that, yeah. yeah we say that no no sometimes, this is right In Sometimes, fact, the candidate is not able to express, but we say no. This is yes. right. This is how we believe. No, I've seen panels break up into two, where one is defending, doing the pros and cons thing uh, about the, a certain proposal. Yes, uh, I I agree with you on that. Um, coming back to you, Doctor Ramji, I just wanted to ask you this. Um, I know that you all evaluate uh, even at the written stage and at the presentation stage the technical feasibility of pro- uh, of projects. So, can you just give us a few pointers how you decide uh, the technical feasibility so that uh, the applicants can strengthen that part of their proposals and presentations? Uh, I think you know uh, one case study probably probably Shubankar can actually tell, but uh, I generally tell you uh, see theoretically when uh, we are exposed to several workshops or. boot camps uh pre feasibility and feasibility studies you know there are some models okay so uh you you know uh, seriously you may not be implying those things to your particular idea okay 
how this is feasible enough to actually get your first customer or okay how it can actually uh, penetrate into the market and uh, who, what are the other players and how do you do what you need so i think these are uh, different parameters if you can actually exercise you know uh, 30 35 questions if you can work out you will come to know, you know out of the four or five ideas uh, once you uh, you know uh, what you can say uh, add these questions to that particular idea you will come to know which one is the best okay you got the idea now so the technical feasibility not only actually technical or technological feasibility you know ultimately you have to see that you know okay um, this can be done this scaffold is done or or you know uh, any bone graft for example okay bone grafts scaffold is done fair enough and uh, this can be scalable or not that is one way you have, you have to understand okay and uh, as uh, dr avinash already mentioned you know the regulatory and other things may be coming later but still at least you have to understand something about that so when we put these other parameters into the picture whether this can be a doable thing for a period of time of two years or three years or maybe five years so uh, I'm just connecting to the earlier question of, you know, when this can be launched or maybe when this can be certified or coming into the market and all. So the feasibility, how we actually look into this picture is that whether the innovator is actually addressing all other parameters relevant to this feasibility in the proposal. In that sense, in the stipulated time, it is only for 18 months, right? What is that you want to do in the 18 months for the proof of concept side, whether it can be done or not, that is one thing. And also the technical feasibility at the long term as well, post BIG as well, we'll be checking it. So having his commercial plan, okay, post BIG, 18 months, 24, 36, or 48, whatever, if he is giving certain plans and strategies out there, and uh, considering the technical uh, understanding of the proposal as well as business understanding of the proposal whether this complete project can be feasible enough to deliver something by certain period in the phases of time like 18 months or, or two years of year. so this is what generally i do as a reviewer but maybe others can add here uh, i'm just looking for that Thank you, uh, Dr. Ramji. Uh, Shubhankar, I'm coming to you now. So uh, the points that uh, Dr. Ramji just raised about uh, figuring this out for yourself, like not only uh, during big, post big, what exactly is the proof of concept that you'll be establishing? How do you, what is your uh, go-to-market strategy and commercialization plan that will take you? <clears throat> Can you take us through your journey? Like from the ideation stage, how did you evaluate your idea? How did you think it was good enough? to apply for this grant? How did you prepare for every evaluation stage? And how did you come up with these long-term plans? If you could share either your resources or how you went about preparing with our applic uh, potential applicants today. Sure, sure, would be happy to. Um, yeah, so me and my co-founder were like passionate about the question of meat and meat alternatives. Um, and that was a very important question to us because we both eat meat and at the same time we understand the ramifications and the problems of it. So that was like front and center in our mind was the problem of uh, alternative protein. And uh, we, we were just reading and exploring. We came across the idea of lab grown or cell based or cultivated meat and found that cultivated meat is an excellent opportunity. There are so many technologies that are still not made, um, whether it is serum free media formulation, scaffolds, etc. So we thought, well, what could we do with our knowledge and our experiences? Um, in order to make something viable, something that is winnable. And uh, so it's like about matching the problem areas, sub problem with our capabilities. And we found that that overlap was at scaffolds. We thought, great, this is a materials challenge. We can make some materials, we can analyze, understand. We have a very set criteria. You know, it has to be edible, it has to be scalable, it has to support cell adhesion, proliferation, differentiation. That's a very defined problem. Then we went through a, a process of trying to read about the existing solutions. Um, what are some of the approaches being taken? What are the review papers speculating? Um, just kind of like an academic understanding or an overview of, um, of the space. And uh, so then we thought, okay, we think that a fungal-based 
uh, scaffolding solution could be scalable, is vegan, is uh, known to support cell adhesion in some or some odd cases, this might really work. Um, so that, that was how we kind of narrowed out into a location. And then we said, okay, now we want to try to prove this, right? We want to actually make some scaffolds. We want to put some cells on there and see if it, they proliferate. And um, that, that's the proof of concept. Once we do that, we realize that that's a stepping stone towards the next phase, which is like, okay, then we can sell these scaffolds. Then we can talk, we can have some partnerships with people who will potentially want to buy our scaffolds. We wanted to do that. Uh, we found that we had we were developing some scaffolds, but we weren't we didn't have ready to locations to test it on our own, and that's how we kind of came to Bayrak Big, and Bayrak Big just fit that perfect gap. He said, "Why not do the POC studies yourself instead of relying on external partners and doing a long iterative process? Do that iteration in house, and uh, develop that proof of concept, that cell culture in house." And uh, once that stuck, we realized, okay we should set a proof of concept that will take us to the next level. So we set some goals for ourselves. Okay, okay if we can achieve these things uh, within this period of time, which is realistic, both, uh, then we will get to go in the year after BIG, we will have the opportunity to sell this product, to pilot this product with other cultivated meat companies. They will be, they will have something, some basis to try it on, right? If, if, you meet a company that has nothing and that says, here's a material, try it out for us. You get nothing out of it. They're probably not going to try it. Whereas if you give them a product that's already working, that you have some preliminary data protocols for, they're much more likely to try it. And then they are much more likely to become a customer. Um, so the, see see this POC as a pathway to a customer. And, and then I think it's going to be valuable. Thank you very much. I would encourage the participants to please raise your hands and ask some of your questions yourself. You have before you uh, three panelists who are quite happy and very insightful and can share their experiences with you. So please um, raise your hands and uh, ask your own questions. Um, going forward, uh, while we wait for uh, others to ask questions, I wanted to ask Dr. Shazali this. How does one, uh, so uh, young innovators, to young and old innovators today are always brimming with ideas, right? But not every idea is executable, scalable, is probably not appropriate for big or uh, something else should be nurtured. Now this gamut of ideas that an innovator comes up with, how do you suggest that we evaluate them, keeping the market in mind? Okay, Bratati. So uh, let me begin by saying that um, uh, a, while not every idea is executable, uh, the definition of executable and the perception and the meaning of executable can be different for different people. Let's say, for example, uh, if I come up with idea and say, okay, if I blink my eye, the entire uh, the, uh, the room should be dim. Now, uh, that's an idea. And if I work on it, it's for my own self and it has worked and it does, it helps me do things. But, and I executed it also. Uh, so people differentiate, you can't differentiate between a commercialization and the execution. So ideas can, uh, ideas are welcome and they are, there is nobody's uh, uh, property and there are not one person's property or one person's or business domain. Uh, but uh, uh, one should quickly differentiate as to where am I headed with this? Is this are you talking of commercialization or are you doing it for yourself? Or are you doing a small for a small subset of people? Uh, so eventually, uh, everybody wants to equate ideas with commerce or with money, that for this idea, I should get so much money. Now, first I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, bring a highlight or, you know, throw some light on these aspects. Ideas are welcome and they can come from any form. In fact, while we are at that, I must also tell you that we, uh, the youngsters should also focus on uh, incremental innovation. Let's say there is an innovation that we are able to add on to it. That's also good enough. So they, so people can think of small things also. It's not as if you should have the big and unicorn idea always. 
you can always have your own uh, universe of you know uh, uh, small uh, innovations or incremental innovations question is uh, and there is a, i forget who said so but uh, unless the idea helps the common man or unless the innovation actually can be percolated down to the last person the value of the idea is different for different people so if uh, so that is where there is a gamut or there is a range or a, how do you say of uh, there is a spectrum of how much commercial potential does an idea have i think that's where we all get blinded we all st- start thinking uh, having big stars in the eye that there is a billion dollar idea may not be a billion dollar so you have to first very quickly figure out in this spectrum of commercialization and in this entire gamut of commercialization where does my idea stand it may be at one end of the spectrum which is zero but it does help some some small subset and to the other in the other end of the spectrum it could be indeed be a billion dollar idea so no harm in trying for each of those ideas but realize remember that each idea has got its own commercial potential as long as you guys are uh, have uh, have um, uh, realized it and as long as you guys have um, able to reconcile to it ki okay good idea but it is just about let's say a few million dollars or a few hundred dollars idea and it cannot be more than that but you can still go ahead and do it now pro- problem is that uh, um, uh, on the on the innovation i strongly suggest uh, this is where i think most of us go wrong i strongly suggest actually bounce it bounce it against people you know because you are not expected to have the entire world's perspective uh some of us have spent ages and you know getting those variable data points and variables uh, to sheer exposure and uh, uh, and you can take advantage of those variables uh, and figure out where do i stand now a 22 year old or a 23 year old uh, is not expected to know the nasa is not expected to know the uh, material science is not expected to know the electronics but at the same time if you are able to go out and check out pratidhi uh, i tend to scatter uh, my thoughts sometimes when my brain is in hyperdrive i tend to scatter so let to quickly sort of na- yes, navigate uh, you can sa- to- no you can summarize uh, what you're saying i i'm i am liking the flow of what you're saying so i'm not trying to interrupt you but yes yeah. uh, so uh, what, what, what i'm trying to tell uh, these guys while i while i got the advantage of this platform is uh, innovation can come from from, from any form but don't make sure that it has got a if you want to put a number to it then take out an exercise to figure out in the commercial spectrum where does this idea fit in it may not be at the high end of the spectrum it may be at the low end of the spectrum now the next step is do you really want to spend your time to do that because doesn't mean that every idea that's where most of the failure so called failures or so called perceived failures happen oh iska to kuch aa nahi raha hai humne itna pp kits banaya humne itna mask banaya itna मटी बायो मटेरियल बनाया उसको कुछ नहीं निकला दैट इज वेट वर आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज दैट नॉट एवरी आइडिया ट्रांसलेट्स इनटू बिग बिजनेस इन फैक्ट द दैट इज व्हाई आई एम सजेस्टिंग फॉर द यंगस्टर्स टू चेक आउट विद यू नो द इंडस्ट्री गाइस और द रिलेटेड रिलेटेड डोमेन एक्सपर्ट्स एंड एंड चेक आउट विद मल्टीपल नॉट वन पर्सन बिकॉज़ देयर आर टाइम्स व्हेन यू माइट बी एनकाउंटरिंग अ पर्सन हु हिमसेल्फ हैज गॉट अ लिमिटेड horizon uh, as a scope so go out be uh, general go out and check the tech sector with others also at the same time so in the pathway you have to first figure out what is the commercial potential what is the application uh, potential and let me also only focus on a few application areas and things like that i i my i does that sort of cover yes, ground yes yes it does so uh, i've always wondered this for myself and i'm sure the people listening today are also benefiting from that that how to evaluate the idea whether it's uh, good enough uh, but you you you've given us a good matrix by which to kind of gauge it uh, where whether to take it forward or not and who to talk to that that i'm sure will be helpful for all uh, 
Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shizale, for your answers today. Uh, we're kind of coming to the end of the session, so I'll just uh, take some um, inputs from uh, Dr. Ramji. If you could give us a brief um, pointers for our audience today as to how to effectively write and present and finally execute their big grant. So how to think even beyond big, first of all, write the winning grant and land big and then think beyond it. But if, if you could just give them some pointers from your experience. Yeah, I mean, the coming weeks, I may be <laughs> taking some sessions on anatomy and uh, dissection of uh, big proposal, BIG proposal. Uh, some of you can attend, but basically uh, pointers in the sense, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, try to actually uh, address only those uh, specific points in your proposal, okay? And... Uh, Clarity on your objectives and uh, timelines, that's important. Don't be over ambitious. And uh, I think, you know, more importantly, before you uh, put your pen on the paper, uh, I think surveys are very important. Uh, that's what uh, most of the uh, reviewers as well as uh, panel members are looking for nowadays. You know, see, uh, as uh, Dr. Avinash rightly pointed now, uh, accept the critics which are very critical for your proposals and other applications i think you know if you get your critics and uh, when you're opening your oh my god how can i miss this very base point or maybe important point i think you try to actually talk to more people uh, your well wishers or friends or maybe the actual customers you are thinking right some of the segments you may be touching right so Try to actually get those points. I think those are the valuable points. You can articulate your proposal accordingly and you write your uh, proposal with a clear cut objectives. Of course, preliminary data also may not be there, but still BIG can be possible in the sense some of them, they need a basic grant or to actually generate the P, uh, kind of, you know, this uh, 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 preliminary data. So I think uh, if you can tell the story such a way, even in, the, in your writings, I think, okay, I think that's fine. This guy will be uh, generating the data, but this is really exciting. And there are some commercial partners. So team, team is one thing that, you know, if, if you can bring in a couple of hospitals or maybe some agricultural, uh, or you can say FPO groups are in place and your middle vendors are in place as your advisors. I think that chain is completing. You are innovating. You are not going to sell, but you are transferring to your, uh, what you can say, commercial advisors or mentors already there in your team. And you're making a story nicely, right? So I think uh, these points quickly, I want to tell uh, uh, all, the, all the participants here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Shubhankar, I'll uh, end with my last question to you. Uh, so how has a post big, how has your journey been? Has uh, the funds, the support that you received through this grant, has it helped you? What, if any, the, uh, pointers do you have or advice to share uh, with the potential applicants today? What does this, even landing successfully a big grant, what implications does that have on an entrepreneur's journey? It has been an excellent uh, opportunity to uh, go through the big process because it kind of more than anything else, of course, you know, the money helps, but um, it has clarified our vision about what needs to be done, the milestones that needs to be achieved. And uh, you have a timeline that is very clear. And uh, so your science also becomes a lot more objective oriented. Um, you go on fewer exploratory side tracks, but you can identify them. Like, wow, this could be a really cool thing, but you, you're like, wait, I have to, I have to finish the big. Um, and so that's been great. Uh, since the Bayrak BIG grant, we were, we were given an in-principle approval last February. Uh, then the whole COVID thing happened. Uh, so we were at home for a good six, eight months with, uh, you know, the slow processing. Because of COVID, like everyone was at home, I guess. Uh, we were finally granted in October last year. Uh, since then, we actually did do the two-dimensional proof of concept studies that we had put out for our milestone one and half of milestone two. So we're, we're on track on that front. And um, 
so you get you get money up front uh, to start spending so you can think instead of at least for me before uh, byrac big i was always thinking about where i can save money as opposed to what kind of scientific outcomes i want um of course you know when you get a bag like you have a responsibility to spend it well and responsibly on, on the consumables and all that but if you have that clarity going into it um it becomes very easy um and after uh, you know the outcomes that we receive from byrac big we actually applied to an international competition um because now we had some data and we had something to talk about right before we couldn't have thought about doing something like that because we didn't have the data um and because of that uh, funding we could actually explore something we should we could actually put something out there and uh, we actually came uh, through to the semi finals of that x prize feed the next billion um challenge which is an international competition for making a 50 115 gram chicken breast product uh, with a lower environmental impact and uh, we're one of i think two teams or three teams from india and um, that's been a great honor and i think uh i think that's um uh, that could have only happened through the support of byrac big because that uh, the data that we got we could get or the science we could explore um couldn't have been possible uh, the support that we received from sign the incubation facilities um right like setting up a lab the like sign bio lab or any of the other incubation partners who have bionists will take crores of rupees and we get to rent them at highly subsidized rates and that's really useful and in the future that's going to be really helpful for our r&d as well so yeah it's a great opportunity take it thank you shubhankar um, i think uh, with that i will uh, kind of come to uh, the end of the session i'm sure uh, our three panelists today if nothing else has inspired you to write a good good big proposal not to give up on your hope on your idea but to build on it take the uh, if you are going through several rounds of these evaluation take the comments that are being given to you to heart work on them improve on your idea don't give up uh, this is a very competitive grant and uh, you have to put your best foot forward if you are to succeed here with that um, i would like to thank our speakers today for agreeing to join the session at a very uh, last uh, short short notice so dr sajale thank you so much dr ramji and shubhankar for uh, yeah. uh, for answering all our questions exhaustively and giving us very very important insights to take forward i really enjoyed this session and i hope the participants did too and uh, with that note of thanks i end this session thank you very much thank you for this opportunity Thanks to Sai, and uh, nice meeting you all. Have a great time. Bye bye. Nice meeting you. Bye bye.